Hey everybody, this is uh, Meow Theater, and welcome to my very first video tutorial on how to create a kind of Modern Warfare 3 uh, text effect using Cinema 4D and uh, After Effects. And Photoshop if you want kind of like a custom uh, text look using Pass. So let's take a look at what we're going to be creating here, and uh, we'll take it from there. All barricades erected, area locked down. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and hop into Cinema 4D. Now the first thing you want to do, uh, by default, um, these little lines here, it, the render settings are set to a uh, lower resolution, 320 by 240. So uh, just go ahead and click here um, to your render settings, go to your output and switch it to film and video uh, HDV slash HDTV 720, 29.97, meaning 29.97 is your uh, frames per second. So uh, now we've got a nice HD, you can see the lines uh, expanded. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add some MoGraph MoText. Alright, so here's our text, and uh, let's go ahead and set our camera up right around there. And uh, go ahead and type in whatever you want. Um, now, just a, a little side note, say you wanted something more custom, and uh, you can't really do much inside the Cinema 4D to... Uh, kind of adjust that text. So say we wanted this like Modern Warfare 3 text with a, uh, you know, like a line going through it. Um, you can always do that and then basically export your paths. So like, I know this is going to look like uh, crap right here, but just as, gonna, as an example. So like, say you wanted like this line in there. Basically, you just select what you want um, as your path and you go to paths and you make selection a path right down here. So now that's your work path, you can see the lines go around it, and then you file export paths to Illustrator. So I've already got some examples here, and then basically you come back over to Cinema 4D, you're going to open up your uh, your paths that you just created in Photoshop. So like the words Havoc, you know, I kind of did that. So here's the H and the A, just click OK when this pops up. So then, you know, kind of more of a custom look. And uh, basically, you, you use extrude nerves to do that, and you drop them into your extrude nerves, and then there you go. So you can do it that way as well, um, but for this tutorial, let's just use some normal text, um, and that's going to work for us anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, my name here. It's M-E-O-W, meow. And uh, center our text here, and we're going to change the font by clicking font right here. And the font that the Modern Warfare 3... Uh, kind of logo uses it's a uh, bank gothic and it's a uh, it's somewhat of a modified bank gothic but for our purposes um, it'll work fine it'll look pretty similar so bank gothic and we'll go ahead and switch it to bold and click OK so here we have our uh, our text and uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to the horizontal spacing and I'm gonna actually kinda bring these letters in just a little bit like so and uh, we can go ahead and get started here with our camera. So that's where I want my camera position to be. So I'm actually going to click this little light here, click camera. And now what we can do is we can rotate freely around, but if we ever want to come back to that view again, we can click this little black box, it'll turn white. Now we're in the camera view. But keep in mind, if you're in this view and you move around and you pan, it's going to uh, move the camera itself. So always uncheck that when you're just uh, doing your normal workflow stuff. So let's go back to camera view, do a little quick render. So this is kind of what it looks like before we add anything into it. Um, let's actually move the camera just a little bit. There we go. Alright, so click on your text and under these little uh, tabs go to caps and we want to switch these caps to a uh, fillet cap. Steps 1, radius 2, and 2. And the reason we do this is so that on the edges you can already kind of see it. it catches a little bit more light, gives it a little more uh, life to it. So that's looking good. Next, we'll add a new material. We'll check off this specular. We don't want the come into color. And uh, click in this little box right here. You can adjust it just like this too, but I always just kind of use this. And what we want is we want kind of like a limish green Modern Warfare 3 text. You don't want it too light because the lights in your scene are actually going to light up the color more than it looks on here. So there's our color. And we also want to check reflection bring the brightness right here down to, I don't know, 20-ish. And for our texture, to click this little arrow, drop down, and Fresnel. And we're going to turn that down to about 20-something as well. So now you can see our uh, texture preview here. It's nice lime green with a little bit of a environmental reflection going on. And uh, 
looking good there and you can drag and drop the reflection directly on the text here in the scene or you can drag it, drag it uh, onto the layer so we'll just drop it on hit a little render and uh, that's what we're working with now so next thing is uh, you're gonna add in your lights um, you can use uh, let's get out of camera view here alright but you, you can use some normal lights to light this scene um, you know kinda the effect you're kinda going for is sorta like this and then uh, you want another light to kind of light the bottom of your text. So if you move your lights around like so, you kind of get this effect. Maybe add another one up top and turn the intensity down just a tad. And uh, that's that's looking okay. Um, so you can play around with your lights. I'm actually going to kind of cheat a little bit. And uh, I bought the Grayscale Gorilla light kit pro you can do that as well if you just google grayscale gorilla you can check out his site he's got some great tutorials on uh, cinema 4d and you can buy his uh, light kit pro as well as uh, some other pretty cool plugins so with the light kit pro i'm going to add in this overhead soft box so this is going to give our text a nice some really nice reflections and uh... that looks pretty good and now what i'm going to add in is a nice little uh... spotlight we'll get out of camera view here we're going to move the spotlight down beneath the text and uh, we're actually going to kind of rotate it up so it's kind of looking up at the text and it's catching a little bit of uh, uh, light from below. We'll, oh yeah, you can grab these little orange things and kind of move your spotlight back and forth. So I'm going to kind of move it to about there and I'm going to turn the intensity of this uh, spotlight um, down to maybe, let's say about 50 go to our camera view, take a look here, and uh, that looks great. Um, you know, you can always go in and uh, really, really uh, fine-tune this, but for the tutorial's purpose, you know, I'm going to say that looks fine. Okay, so we've got our scene lit up. Oh, actually, one more thing. Right now, if you rent, if you do this uh, pre preview render right here, you'll see uh, it's just a black background. That's cool if you want just a plain uh, black background, but I actually want kind of like a... Uh, gradient in the back kind of like a dark green to a black um, so make a new material turn off specular once again come into your color tab and for the texture we want gradient and if you click on this gradient uh, thing right here we'll change the type to 2d mm, excuse me 2d circular and here we can change uh, our color attributes and you can add in more and uh, really have some fun with that but uh, anyway so I'm just gonna change this black to a very dark green and change the white to an almost black, not all the way black, I'm gonna go with like almost black. So now you can see it kinda got this green gradient going on and uh, to make that your background you're gonna click this light drop down menu and choose background. So now we've got this background in the scene, I'm gonna drag and drop that new material we just made in the background, hit render and uh, now it looks like we're getting a gradient. Now that doesn't look too good to me. I'm actually going to come back into the settings. I'm going to turn this green a little bit darker. Green, I'm actually going to turn this to full black. See how that looks. That might look a little better. Let's take a look. Uh, okay, that looks a lot better. I'm happy with that. And uh, once we go into After Effects, uh, the lighting will be slightly different as well. We'll add some more effects in there. So that looks good for now. So our entire scene is set up and uh, it's looking good now we're ready to animate the uh, letters kind of rotated around uh, like you saw in the preview so the next thing we want to do is down here you can change the, your amount of frames uh, currently by default it's set to 90 frames I can tell you now that if you use the uh, the audio file that's that's going to be in the description I can tell you now right at about 90 frames is when you want that uh, the little green wavy lines to pop in so it's like saying all the uh, voice commands yada 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 and then it goes Doof! that's 90 frames that's when it comes in so we don't want the whole scene to be 90 frames because it wouldn't be enough uh, video footage so let's go ahead and make it mm, 275 drag the slider out here to increase our time frame so now we've got this if you hit play you know there's no animation yet but anyway um, so what we're gonna do now is we've got our text here um, if we hit C if we highlight the text and hit C on the keyboard, C is in Charlie, it's going to make it editable and you're going to have all these drop downs and then as you can see you can edit each of your letters individually which is what we want. 
However, right now the axis of these rotating, uh, these little rotation um, uh, circles, they're on the bottom left. So what we need to do is we actually need to go to Object, make a new null, and uh, we'll name this like M, for example. So if we drag the M here into this new null, uh, we'll actually have to re apply the texture there we go so create basically however many nulls you need for how many letters or objects you have and go ahead and name them so that you don't get confused uh, to name them you just select the layer hit enter and it'll uh, come up with a little text thing so there's our M we'll drop down our E into that null our O here and W there so now we've got our nulls we can go ahead and just delete this and uh, go ahead and apply the texture to each of your new nulls with your uh, with your text. So there we go. Now we've got these individual uh, nulls that we can rotate. Now here, the problem is, is uh, like I said, we need to move the actual axis. So right now you're selected over here, your object. So you're going to move your object. If you click the next one down, you're actually going to be able to move your null. So what we want to do is we want to move, we're on the M right now, we want to click this, click the M, click on this, we can move the null itself kind of up towards the middle of the object. Now if we switch back here, you can see if we click on rotate, it's actually rotating it where we put the null, which is exactly what we want. So basically, you want to put your nulls uh, right in the center of each of the, uh, the text objects. So we'll go through here. That's about right, right there. Go to the O, switch to the O's null placement right in the center. And you always want them kind of in the center of wherever you're going to be rotating around. So we'll go to the W, kind of put that there, and that's looking pretty good right there. Actually, going to move that one up just a little bit. You can test it out by switching back and forth. So that looks pretty good. It's it's not perfect, but try to get it right in the center. Test it out. Rotate them around uh, on uh, on this axis and make sure that oh, there we go. Make sure that it kind of can rotate right in the center. You know, it's not rotating way down here because that's not the effect that you want. So now that we've got the null set up for that, we're actually going to create another new null, and this is for the entire text. So drag all of your M E O W all your letters into this new null. Each of them are still individual editable if you drop down the hierarchy, but as a whole, now we can put the rotation onto the uh, entire object itself. So let's go ahead and put some animation on this. Um, let's take a look at the video and just kind of see what it looks like. So as, you see, area locked down. Locked down. as you can see, it's turning 180 degrees, and then uh, the letters are also turning on the other axis uh, one by one. So at zero frames, um, go ahead and select your null that has all of your other letters inside it. And uh, you want to hit the rotation on the first keyframe zero and hold shift, rotate it around 180 degrees. You can go either way, but I'm just going to go uh, uh, counterclockwise. So once you've got it set up like that, there's a little button down here. It's a red little circle with a key in it. Go ahead and click that. That's going to set a keyframe. And like I said, if you're going to use the same audio track that's included in the description, you want to go to about 90 frames, and that is where you want the animation to end right there. And we're going to go ahead and click this red thing, this little red keyframe thing again, set a keyframe at 90, and there you go. So now we've got, if you hit play, we've got our, uh, we've got our basic rotating uh, animation going. So now what we want to do is, when we drop down this null, we want to animate each of the letters. So let's start with the M. Actually, let's just start with the W here. Uh, go back to zero frames and go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees. Set a keyframe. And that one we came forward on this axis. So on the next one, I'm actually going to go back. So I'm going to go backwards that way. That way they are... Uh, let's get out of this view so it's easier to rotate. That way they're rotating on uh, opposite angles. They're not. You don't want them to rotate on the uh, on the same axis in the same direction you want them to alternate each object set a keyframe for there and this one's going to go back come on and 180 
set a keyframe. So now, when it comes back to this 90 degrees, we need to rotate them obviously back to their original positions. So, to start with the M, same thing, we're going to rotate 180, set a keyframe. For the E, we're going to go back opposite of what we did for the M, set a keyframe. O, come forward, keyframe. Let's make sure I did that. Yep. W, we're going to go back 180 and keyframe. So let's go back into our camera view. There we go. And let's take a look at how this looks when we play it. So that was good. That's exactly the effect we want. That's my parrot in the background. So if we hit render, we can kind of see what this looks like kind of halfway through. And uh, there you go. So bam, 90 frames and then uh, some extra keyframes here for us to work in in After Effects. So that's looking pretty good. And uh, once you got a good effect going, you got your lighting, you're, you think you're good to go, render it out for uh, After Effects. Click on Render Settings. Uh, come to your output. Make sure it's 720, like we discussed in the beginning. And uh, your frame range is the only other thing you really want to change. Right now it's current frame, which will just render basically one JPEG. We want to render all frames. Go to the Save tab for File. Click this. Choose a uh, destination. We'll make a uh, Modern Warfare 3 tutorial. And we'll do this Render Test. Hit Save. Format. You want to change from TIFF to QuickTime. Or you can use, you know, uh, AVI. I, I usually just use QuickTime because it's easier. There's no sound. I just uncheck include sound for no reason, really. And then we want to click this middle button to render it out. And we will go ahead and stop the video here, and I'll come back to you once this render is done, and we'll hop into After Effects. All right, we're back, and this is what our Cinema 4D render came out to be. looks great and we've got plenty of room down here to uh, work with in After Effects. So let's go into After Effects, File, Import File, and Render Test .mov. It's in our project uh, files here. We're going to drag it down to a new composition and here's what we're working with. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to get that audio files. So let's go to File, Import File, Modern Warfare 3 Sound Clip, drag it on in, and I know it happens right after three seconds. Um, uh, yeah, that's when the uh, the green line should come in. So got the uh, audio file in there. Let's now get the green kind of wavy lines here, and uh, once again it's going to be in the uh, description. So here's our lines. Unfortunately, it's all black. We can't see our screen. What do we do? No problem. Go to the layer, the green wave lines layer of this video. Change this mode here, the blending mode, to screen. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and drag this up to the middle of our text. And we'll drag the very beginning of it just after about three seconds, which is right when we want it to kind of do that sound from the audio file. Um, so, uh, just a quick note too also, if you go to Edit, Preferences, Memory and Multiprocessing, and you click on the tab down here, check Render Multiple Frames Simultaneously, bump this all the way up and bring it to a longer RAM preview. What that'll do is it'll use more of your RAM to uh, do a longer RAM preview, and it usually will do it uh, a little bit faster as well. So, my computer's not that great, but as you can see, I mean, it's rendering, doing the uh, preview pretty fast, so... Let's see if the audio lines up with when these lines kind of pop up in our uh, in our scene. We'll go ahead and click it. All barricades erected. Area locked down. All right, so that lined up perfect. Um, the next thing we want to do is you see how these lines kind of go off to the edge of the screen, and it kind of covers up the text a little bit much. It's sort of hard to read the word meow or whatever your word is. Um, we can fix that by using uh, a mask. So let's click the green waves line, make sure it's selected, come up here to the pen tool, and kind of just uh, select the area you want to keep. So I'm kind of going to do like a sort of diamond shape. And it doesn't matter how, you know, uh, jagged this is because, you know, like right now, yeah, it's an abrupt, 
you know, cut off of this thing. So if we were to leave it like that, it would look really bad. But once you close off your path, right click in here and go to mask, mask feather, and let's do about 250 pixels. And that looks pretty good. It kind of fades off the edges here. And uh, you can kind of read the text a little bit more, and you can adjust the opacity as well. So, uh, to do that, you know, you just uh, bring down the mask, click on the mask, make sure your pencil selected, same thing, mask, and then mask opacity. We can bring it down to maybe like 80. So, there we go. That's looking good. It's all lined up with the audio. So, the next thing we can do is we can go to layer new text, and we can do something like subscribe to me, bitches. Obviously, uh, you wouldn't want to write that in your real video. So I did the same text uh, or same font as this. It's the bank, uh, bank gothic. You probably get it off the font, or you might even that might even be a default font. I'm not really sure, but uh, we can bring this in a little bit. You know, make it a little limeish green color. Doesn't really matter. This is just a tutorial. You can mess around with that. Maybe even go do effect. Uh, stylize glow add a little bit of glow in here you know bring up the glow radius whatever so now what we want to do is we want to add we don't want just you know the green lines to just pop in right we want it to kind of like flash so if you use page up and page down on your keyboard you can actually go frame by frame so let's page up um, a couple layers before the green lines come in go to layer new solid make a white all white layer drop down this arrow transform opacity keyframe click this little stopwatch you can see it added a keyframe bring the opacity all the way down page down to go up a frame and then bam we got our flash and then one more frame forward and bring it down so now you can see there's these three keyframes down here of a nice little flash right when the uh, the lines kind of pop in so and then it's bam oh you didn't see it there but You'll see it. All barricades erected, area locked down. So we got that nice flash when the uh, when the lines come in. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is this text. We don't want it to be here, you know, throughout the whole thing. We just want it to like fade in right around here, maybe a second after these green lines come up. So same thing for the opacity of the white slide. So drop down the text layer, go to transform, opacity keyframe, click it, bring it down to zero, and then come forward maybe about a second bring it up to 100. So now it'll fade in right there, right after the green lines come in. So looking good there. Um, let's see. The other thing we can do is we can uh, bring in some particles because it's looking a little flat. We want to give it a little more kind of 3D and like more depth to it. So we've got these particles. Same thing, guys. It's a black screen. Oh, no. What do we do? Change the blending mode to screen. And now we've got we can see through that black and we just get these nice particles. Um, same thing with the green lines as well. Um, I'm going to take the pen tool, and I only want the uh, I only want the particles to kind of show up in the middle. So we got that, and we'll do mask, mask feather. Let's say 275. So now we kind of got like like nice faded. The particles are sort of like more only showing up in the center here, looking pretty good there. The other thing we want to do is um, change the color from white. I want these particles to be kind of a green. So Select the particle layer, go to Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation. If we change this right now, it's not really going to do anything because uh, it's all white. But if we check Colorize and then move this Colorize thing, you can kind of see, you know, there's like a reddish orange. Then we'll move it over here to more of a uh, more of a greenish color. So that's looking pretty good. Um, there we go. 